Welcome back, everyone. Today we're at Bodega in Maine with a very special guest, Steve Hornung. Our guest today, he wears very many uh, creative hats. Muralist, DJ, writes screenplays. So Steve, uh, tell us something about yourself. Uh, well, I'm a local artist, born and raised in the Vancouver area. Uh, been doing this professionally my whole life really, but seriously for, this is like 24th year. Uh, so I started when I was 17, uh, doing murals. And uh, yeah, I just figured I'd start when I was younger. I had the opportunity to just kind of Hit, hit the world running and decided to go for it. So here I still am. What's the name of your company? Uh, I started off as Steve the Creative Individual and I branched off to make it into more of a group thing, uh, the Creative Individual Company. Uh, where did you get your training? How did you learn to paint? Uh, well, I've always been uh, like creative and always dabbled with crafts and did plays and stuff when I was a kid. So I always had that, uh, that you know, I always had that drive to, to do that. It was a hobby. My mom was a, is a talented artist and my dad was a talented musician as well. And so I kind of came by it honestly that way. Um, uh, but then I also st I stumbled in, in work experience in high school. I volunteered and apprenticed under uh, another artist out in the valley, Dean Lazay, and uh, got to learn the ropes with sign painting, uh, mural painting, and also got to learn the business side of it and discovered that I can actually earn a living doing this and how I can monetize the craft that I was doing. So I saw that it is possible and being a young 17, 16, 17 year old, fearless and just went out and went after it. Any formal training? Did you go to school? No formal training, uh, just apprenticing under Dean. And I also learned sign writing from a couple other old school sign writers. Uh, Paul Kuzma, who was from Pittsburgh and New York and stuff like that. And uh, Terry Chanel, who is, uh, he's an old school. They're both legends, so yeah, I was lucky. Well, today actually we're at Bodega in Maine and Steve, he actually just completed two murals for the restaurant and they're actually above on the roof. Uh, can you tell us any other clients that you had and, and where they can be found? Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've worked for everybody <laughs> pretty much. Worked from everybody from Disney to local families, uh, doing children's rooms. Uh, I've got some great pieces. Uh, I've got a... I've got some big pieces all over Vancouver, uh, down at Denman Community Center. There's a large, uh, it's called What a Ride, and it's a big tree that's like an amusement, amusement ride, and it's spinning around. Um, there's one at Renfrew, Renfrew Sky Train Station. I did a 230 foot black and white mural train, train um, subject which was sort of represented by loneliness and missed connection. There's a couple other large projects I did. I did two murals at the Beaumont Studios uh, at Fifth and Alberta, which is like a, a group collective of artists. So I have two pieces on the building there, which I'm really proud of. And it was, it was, like, a, it was like a family of artists to be a part of, which was really nice. Um, yeah, and then other, you know, I have lots of, I mean, it's been 20, 24 years, so there's a lot of stuff I've done for private clients in homes. Uh, I'm starting to travel internationally as well, it's just down the U.S., um, doing some work for a client there, and uh, yeah. Are you uh, painting something right now? Well, like I said, like you said, I'm working in, uh, I'm working on a TV series for Netflix right now as a scenic painter with a really great team of artists and creatives over at Bridge Studios. That's a lot of fun, I, I love it. And uh, I'm also writing a screenplay for my own show, uh, which is, stay tuned. Uh, it's, I'll, give, I'll tell you this, it's kind of a combination of retro -y, nostalgic, early 80s Wonder Years, slash Goodfellas, slash Forrest Gump. That's quite the slash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so stay tuned. I, it's, I, I, I believe it's going to be a really great oh, we show. We look forward to seeing that. Yeah, thank you. We're doing a home theater mural for a private client out in Surrey right now as well. So that's a lot of fun. And yeah, there's lots of still quite a few. There's some other projects too. Doing Oakland Realty down in Yale Town in a couple of weeks. Can you tell us why painting? Why? How did you get into it? Like you said, your mother was an artist, but 
What, what was it that made you say, I wanna, I wanna do this for a living? It's funny, I never did. I was like, great, like 16. I was sort of unfocused in school, just whatever. School was kind of easy, it was kind of bored. Um, I was kind of just joking around, like I was in, either install car stereos or I'm gonna be, buy an ice cream truck and deliver ice cream, ha ha ha, right? You know, like I just didn't really care. But then I got scooped up by Dean's wife, uh, who was a student teacher, and they brought me into their studio. And I always, I always like would draw and stuff, but I was actually mostly in drama and theater. And I did music all through being a kid. I never, never thought I could be an artist. So I actually kind of just stumbled into it that way. And so around 16, 17 is when I went into the studio, and like I said, I volunteered and apprenticed, and that's where the light bulb went on. Right? Like, oh. You know, maybe this, I could turn this into a career and this, I'm learning the ins and outs of it too and I'm watching how he's running a business. And... You mentioned a few names earlier. Is there, has there been anybody or a few people that have been inspiration or like a mentor to you even to, the, to this day? I'm inspired by like fellas like Elon Musk and Richard Branson and any, any type of personality. People that just... I'll put it this way, my mom said the nicest compliment to me a while ago. She said, the thing I admire about you is that you've never said you couldn't. And I still have that attitude and mentality and I, when I move forward I, I create my opportunities. So I can't think of any names off the top of my head, but any type of character like that or people that inspire me, that's who I've mentored off of. Um, I'm pretty, I, I get influence daily just from my surroundings and constantly from what I'm taking in around. So I don't have, like I like I like the freedom of Dali and stuff. Uh, I don't necessarily like all his paintings and stuff, but I respect his eclectic span of work. But, and I also like, a big influence for painting is Frank Frazetta. Not, I don't like his content, it's like, uh, fantasy paintings, but I love his technical style and the color he uses, so I definitely have that influence in my work. Is there any advice you can give to somebody that's a young kid or an inspiring artist, painter that wants to get into doing what you do, I guess? I would say just go for it. Like, um, ask questions, ask around, and if you, see, you meet someone who is doing what you want, ask questions, you know? Feel free to ask me questions, anybody get in touch with me, you know, you can email me through my website or uh, Facebook. I would hope that young people are kind of being encouraged to think outside the box and, you know, encouraged to go for their passions. It feels like it's more of like that type of climate, even more so than when I started 24 years ago. Um, and my parents have always been supportive, but I know it was a scary thing for them. And I don't know, I don't know if that's still the case. I think parents maybe are opening up a bit more to the opportunities that way. So that's what I would say, just cliche, go for it. How would you describe your style? Uh, it depends on the situation, but I would, I use spray cans, paint, acrylic, rollers. I also do canvases with oil paintings and stuff like that. Um, any, you know what, I, I would say the simplest way to describe my style is I always try to achieve the most impact with the least amount of strokes or touching the paint. So I try to be as free as possible and just whoa, let the let the universe create what it's going to do with the, the tool and the paint. Do people, when they hire you to do um, a painting like the one above here, do they come with a, a specific vision of their own or do they ask you to just, just go with it? This is what we do. Um, sometimes, you know, a little bit of both. Uh, in my earlier career, definitely there was more people said we want this, this and this and you know what, I, I was okay with that because I was still learning and I took every project as a learning experience and to, you know, tighten up my skills. Um, and now, but recently now, getting a lot more freedom. Um, clients are basically hiring me just because I'm me and they've seen my past work and stuff. Um, and you know, for this one there was some, obviously there was a Spanish uh, influence and a direction that they wanted to see because it is a Spanish restaurant. Uh, but they've been really cool, and uh, you know, I got the opportunity to to do the two two part project, the Ella Matador, which she's a flamenco dancer and also slash female bullfighter. 
So that represents strength and, and fem you know, female strength and, you know. Um, and then the other side is the other, other side of the coin, uh, serenade, which is the fella with the guitar and the bull coming out. So it's kind of like a juxtaposition of the, the two, like a relationship between the two and all the, all the wonderful and confusion that can happen in between. So it's a metaphor for some, a lot of relationships I've witnessed or maybe been a part of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. you. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> well, that's another one, folks. Thanks again. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comments and descriptions down below. What's your story, Vancouver? Our city, our stories.